Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Griffin, I was really deeply disturbed to read your findings about how many cases of suicide and veterans with serious mental health problems were affected by delays in care and substandard care. Uh, many facilities in my home state of Washington are facing staffing problems and long wait times for mental health care. And I just wanted to say if, what, if hospitals in Washington State are on your list of facilities for further investigation, I really hope your team look very closely at the mental health care problems like they have done in Phoenix. Um, uh, here, I want to ask you, the, the Phoenix report really criticizes VHA's resistance to change. And both your report and the White House review found serious cultural and ethical failings across the system. What do you think the VA should be doing to make these kinds of system-wide changes? I think you have to hold people accountable when they ignore directives on how to do business. Um, and, and I think after a while, people will begin to toe the line rather quickly when that, they realize there's a price done. to be paid. And that has not been done. Sister. No. Yeah. I mean, how can you have a certification requirement that you abolish because some of the managers in the field are pushing back about it because they might not be sure if, if their scheduling staff is doing it right and the IG staff might come after them for asserting something that wasn't true or certifying something that wasn't true. You just don't tolerate that. Yeah. Okay. Um, you've mentioned several times here that you're following on 93 facilities investigation. Um, and the results are confirming some of the things you found at Phoenix, the wait times are being manipulated. Right. Um, when your reports are completed, I, I really expect the VA to implement your recommendations quickly and to hold people accountable, as you just referred to. Um, but I wanted to ask you this morning, is your impression that the motivation for these inappropriate practices are more to show false information, or is it more just a lack of training? I think it's a combination of a number of factors. In each of our reports, going back to 05, one of the recommendations was to ensure that the schedulers were properly trained on the way it was supposed to be done. I mean, that, that was a repeat recommendation. So they've been time. hearing this for a long time. Oh, yes. As you know from your previous mm -hmm. time with the committee. Yeah. 2005 was the first time in the first report that we had that. So. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think you have to have a person working the scheduling side that has some clinical knowledge of being able to triage how bad does this veteran need to be seen today as opposed to somebody else. Um, that, has, that, that is not currently the case in my okay. belief at a lot of facilities. Yeah, and I, I know some of the facilities are saying, well, we have a, this is low level, we have a lot of people coming in, it's hard to keep up with it. Is that an excuse? No. I mean, I, I don't think there is an excuse for, I mean, I believe that over the years, uh, VA's budgets have pretty much been matched or exceeded by, um, congressional appropriators. But if you don't know what your demand is and how many are on secret lists, and you don't know, gee, we need 30% more clinicians or whatever the number is, they can't ask for then they money. can't even ask for it. Yeah. So I think, I think the responsibility is you have to do a serious uh, strategic analysis, not just of, of your clinicians, but also the blend with fee basis care and, and come up with a, a solid number that you can hang your hat on and say, in order for us to treat veterans in a quality manner and in a timely manner, we need this number of doctors and we need this amount of money for fee basis for rural areas or what have you. Yeah, and Mr. Chairman, I, I, mean, I know you've heard me say it a million times. This Congress, um, the country wants to be there for our veterans, but if we do not know what the need is accurately, we don't know what to provide, so I, I echo that point. Uh, let me just ask you one other thing. You, you've been doing this a long time. We've been hearing this for a long time. Um, you've been doing a lot of investigations. Have you found any facilities or networks that have done a good job of regularly and thoroughly checking for scheduling gimmicks? 
we found a number of facilities out of our 93 where we concluded that there, there was no manipulation occurring, um, which is a good thing, maybe one-fourth. Um, the bad news is on the other three-fourths, we're pretty confident that it was knowingly and willingly happening and, uh, That's a pretty high and we're percentage. pursuing those. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.